You're listening to Polymatic.media, episode 18 for June 18th, 2017. Welcome to the Polymatic cast. Hi, John. How's it going? Pretty good. How are you, Alan? Uh, good. We changed the intro around. <laughs> we'll see <laughs> how that works out. I don't know. I think the old way flows for me, but uh, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get used to it eventually, I hope. Uh, well, I don't know. We but only do this every couple of weeks. So, at, least, uh, at least I can understand what you're saying, so that's good. Yes, uh, I had a, a <laughs> tooth problem, and so we skipped an episode. Uh, yeah. And and, uh, and yeah, so now I'm all corrected, though, surprisingly, I have a follow-up tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Uh, well, this comes out on Sunday. So, yes, yeah. technically tomorrow for the rest of, yeah, the rest of the world. So... Uh, yeah, so how, how were things for an extra two weeks? Uh, I d- got a lot of sh- stuff done. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> I, I will say, I, uh, through June, I said, you know what, June's too complicated, no Artemis. And, and that was been good for me, because I got some development stuff done that been meaning to get done. And uh, when I have a roommate missing, I sort of have an environment where it's quiet, and I get to control what's around me and uh you know chaos or noise and so i got some coding efforts mm. um you know done towards things that have been meaning to to do so yeah. uh you know having some free time is is actually a good thing so in those two weeks yes i i did also get get a bunch of stuff done mm. I, i've been working on a uh, pixel bar for um for palmatic so mm-hmm. a little project i'm working on yeah i've made a first prototype and I'm going to make a second one, but with, like, all the lessons I learned and then publish the, the plans and all the, all the stuff you need to get for the website. Also make a video about it and stuff. So that's, that's what Is I've that, been working um, on. Was that inspired by that uh, $500 box that is being sold out there? A lot of YouTubers with millions of subscribers are getting? Yeah, but this is a cheap, cheap version. Right. This is... <laughs> This, this isn't like integrated into an app and into a cloud system and you well, know, that kind of. It, well, well, it, it does pull stuff from the internet, so right. So still right, something it, you I, need to make yourself. Yeah, so there's correct. parts that you need to make, but yeah, it's, it's connected it's or could below a hundred euros uh, or a right. hundred dollars even. So is three D printing involved? Definitely. So you're probably oh, gonna have okay. to have a three D printer, but you can probably get somebody else to do that for you, or or the parts of uh, some three uh, D printing site. Mm-hmm. So yeah, cool. I've also been experimenting with some stuff. Uh, some oh. cold brew uh, cafe. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that the, our title? Cold brew cafe. <laughs> that's my vote. That's the first one. That's a good title for the episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and it actually is a mess because I've been uh, I've been trying to get it. I either even ordered some special coffee from a coffee burning place, mm-hmm. um, but it's it gets so bitter. I have no idea how I'm, what I'm doing wrong. So this is uh, my my chance to ask you. So here oh, we go. Okay. Um, so I mean, what do you what do you want me? You want me to just. Maybe I should explain what I'm getting. Yeah, um, I mean, what does what does you need to know? What, what's important to you? To okay, so find out. What I have now is a Hario thing uh, okay. with like a liter of water uh, and a filter. So okay. I put the coffee grounds in the top, but it's like coarse ground, so I get the the most coarse ground I can get. I don't have a grinder myself because you know I don't didn't want to buy everything and then decide, hey, I don't like it, and then throw everything away, or let it rust somewhere in the back of a cabinet somewhere so i just bought the coffee pre ground um i bought them off a website they do uh custom they get like specific beans of coffee and then they grind them to your specifications so Mm -hmm. i got i got tips from all over the place and i thought you know i'll 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 listen to that person and they said costa rican uh coffee make it uh, coarse ground and then put that in there and then uh let it sit for 12 hours. So I let it sit for 12 hours, and it's so bitter. And, and when, I, think, I think it's, from what I've read, if you have a too bitter coffee, you're letting it sit too long. Right. So I'm, I'm doing a new batch now for about six hours. And so see. The, the, the process is not really that hard. And, um, and I'll have to go dig and search. They found a good video that I saw 
after the fact, after I've been well informed or uh, I am well informed enough to make a good cold brew mm -hmm. um, successfully, at least for, for me. Um, so I found a good video. If I find it, I'll give you the link. Maybe we should put this out on, on Twitter or in the show notes. Um, because there was a good video that does explain sort of the manual process of doing it. You don't need a special uh, $30, $40 machine to make cold brew. What you need is some cheesecloth, some coffee filters, um, basically a, like a big flour sift that can sit over, you know, a big bowl. And um, you basically need a coarse ground coffee, fresh coffee, and mm. uh, let it kind of filter through. Um, into water and take that water and refilter it and then let it sit in your fridge for 24 hours. Um, and what it does is it basically uh, removes, when you, when you put coffee beans under heat or most things under heat, you lose things, right? You yeah. change the chemistry of what you're doing when you're cooking. Um, so when you're boiling, what you end up doing is a lot of the essence of the coffee beans gets boiled away um, I or, thought that or even th that more leaches from it, from what I understand. Leaches, right, yeah. And so it removes things, and so what you end up is more acidic, more bitter coffees. Yeah. Um, so you can get more smoothness back into it. In my case, I think it was important, sort of being diabetic, that I needed to control the pipeline better because I like coffee, but then what I end up doing is I end up compensating it's the things I don't like about it, like it being too acidic or being too um, too bitter. And so I put a bunch of sugar and I put a bunch of milk in it, to, and and I'm just compensating. And then I drink that. And so I I like the coffee. I like the hot drink component of it, and I like the little bit of sweetness. And then I end up hurting myself diabetically um, yeah. because I put junk in it that I you know I'm putting more sugar in it to compensate for something. So. I thought, well, why don't I get less caffeine in, but get the same aspects and control the ingredients for the most part? And so that's when I thought about doing cold brew. Someone suggested it to me when I was making cold iced coffees, right? And um, I mean, that's how I ended up doing that. Um, yeah, but from what I read is that it's supposed to be less bitter, well, a lot less bitter and a lot less uh, acidic. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll give that a try, see how that works. So, But I'm not getting any of that. I'm, I'm getting bitter. Right. And so when I got the gear, I didn't, uh, I did the same thing. I didn't want to buy a grounder. I bought like ground coffee in bags in my market and tried that. And it turned out not so bad. It was, it was reasonably pretty good. Um, what you want to do though, is you want real beans. You don't want things that are like beans with French vanilla and, you know, no, you don't want blends, Tabasco sauce in your coffee. Like you don't want stuff with junk in it. Um, I found buying the grinder actually pretty good. It's not that expensive. And, um, mm. you just have to sit there with some, you know, Air jet engine noise for while you're sitting there doing the grind yeah. outside of that it, it's pretty simple stuff so, so for me i bought a, a machine by i think oxo oxo um they're a brand that i've liked for kitchen things so mm -hmm. i bought their kit and their kit just has basically a big sort of um you know a carafe and then at the bottom you you put some filters in it you pull them out you know every time you do a brew um, and they're real cheap, you know, for like a few dollars. I bought like a, you know, their filters for 50 and the kit comes with some. And um, every couple of weeks, weekends, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll do a, a cold brew to kind of, um, you know, refill my stock. But what you do is you just grind the coffee, make sure it's coarse. For me, I know I realize acidity was a problem for me. Um, it like turns my stomach inside out and I mm. have this problem when I'm at work. Um, and so I looked for, I experimented with several different kinds of beans, store-bought mm. beans, fine, um, that were in the low to medium acidity and caffeine strength, right? So uh, Ethiopian beans are good. Um, I originally just to test, I bought Vietnamese stuff and that stuff's really strong. It's also medium to, to high on the uh, caffeine levels. Yeah. Um, and I, I realized I didn't like that. It was too bitter. 
Uh, I mean, I still have it. It's not bad. It's good to sort of intermix that. Yeah, um, but you're making your own blends then. Yeah, then, yeah, a- absolutely. You have to, I think. So what I did is um, there was one in Wegmans called Kona, which is basically a bunch of Hawaiian beans blend um, that's fairly neutral and low. And um, that one I really like. And then um, I have a relative that suggested me something called uh, Papa Nichols. Um, so I, that's a much more, that's a stronger one. Yeah. Um, and I, I tried that. He's, he likes the strong caffeine. Like for him, that's what he loves. For me, I thought, well, this is going to be too strong. But I, I, I bought some other beans. Um, you know, the thing is, if you get it on Amazon, it's going to cost you like 20 bucks, but you get like a pound or two pounds or something like that. It's crazy. Mm-hmm you know, big bag. Um, but that's, that's fine. I'm, I'm only going to use that every, every once in a while. It's going to last me a long time. Uh, and so I made some coffee brew with that and I made some with the Kona. I found my, my perfect combo, right? Um, if you get an Ethiopian blend, that is a good place that I would, I would start with. That's a little more neutral, less bitter, Mm. less acidic. Um, and then what you can do, um, I know what most people do is they make a coffee cold brew and then what they do is they fill the whole cup up with it and then they put their sugar or their milk or whatever it is. It's almost not even needed at that point. And um, then they drink it. And for me, I dilute it. You know, I take a 12 ounce, um, you know, mason jar, right? And I, yeah. I dilute it and maybe maybe not even the first ounce is the cold brew. And then I put spring water in there and... You know, I might put hot water, I might put cold water, and then I'll, I'll put a little bit of milk and put a little bit of sugar, and that's it. That's 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 oh, all. So I you're need. still adding sugar. Yeah, but I'm adding a lot less. So yeah, okay. the the level of sweetness I like is maybe not as much as like buying um, a Starbucks, you know, uh, bottle like they have those frappuccino things, right? But if you take a look on that thing, it's got like 40 grams of sugar in that uh, 16 ounce bottle. Right. And I'm doing um, I, I'm I mean, the ratio is not exact. It's not like one gram of sugar per ounce, but about three packets, sugar packets uh, here, at least in the U.S., those sugar packets are about four grams of sugar, three to four grams of sugar. Hmm. So I'm not putting 24 or 40 grams of sugar in to get that taste because I'm compensating the bitterness. I'm simply just getting right to the little bit of sweetness that I want. Okay. So I, 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 I was thinking I was doing it wrong because I didn't put sugar in there. It was like, yeah, it's all bitter, 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 bitter. No, huh. if you don't put sugar in it, you're just going to more directly feel the essence of the coffee if you've done everything else correctly. You won't, you'll get a little more bitter if you get you buy pre-ground yeah um and the reason i say that is because one you miss out the blooming experience and two um all of the the gases and stuff that come out of the fresh ground have been released they were wherever they were ground they were released and then you just the the result of the grounds is what gets bagged not saying that getting you know a bagged ground is bad it's just not no, going to be I, as... I ordered it at, like, a store that yeah. does this, right? Yeah. Specifically, they grind uh, grind and um, um, roast the coffee themselves. Yeah. So... They, um, on demand. So when it, when somebody needs it, Got they you. do it for you once a week. And um, most of the markets here in the U.S., we have, uh, we have coffee grinding machines that are like that, who you just pour in, you make your own blend, and then, you know, you through a machine and I'll grind it for you right there on, on the spot. Hmm. Um, I just happened to experiment. I found this more Hawaiian bean combo, um, coffee bean combo that was actually really good. But the goals for me were um, medium to low on the caffeine and acidity, hmm. right? And um, that's where I ended up. But also before that, I was just doing straight Ethiopian beans and blends, and um, I think that was also a pretty good starting point for me. Um, I don't mind the taste, but I like the sort of the Kona, uh, the Hawaiian bean combo a little better. Yeah. Um, Papa Nichols, uh, like as in like St. Nicholas, like Nichols, is another uh, bean brand 
Uh, here in the U.S., they come out of Chicago, but you can get them on Amazon. I don't know if you can get them without like great effort in uh, in Europe. Yeah, I mean, I'm just gonna <laughs> buy them off the local store. Yeah, they have, like the, uh, the good stuff. So yeah, but look for look for something. Try with a little bit more low acidity and yeah. um, medium caffeine levels. Um, well, yeah. Well, I, I I haven't really drank that much caffeine in the last two years because I totally stopped doing that two years ago. Um, I've been getting into it, back into it, but like not like the coffee or caffeine fiend that I used to be. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm like, sometimes I'll, instead of, you know, totally rejecting everything cola, I might get a cola or something. But that, yeah. I don't really do that much. So this is just me experimenting with food, trying to see what's good. And mm-hmm. then, you know, when somebody's visiting i could make cold brew and you know i know how to do it right yeah so um i have so, an experience for people when they when they drop by so i think it's kind of i just want to take and let's see if i could do it in about a minute or less um only i i just think it's kind of important to reiterate what the process really is so as i mentioned earlier you just want to you want to get a fresh ground um i do in terms of on my grinder, the course rating, wherever it is, let's say one to ten, I'm about a four or a five on the coarseness. Um, and then I put my beans in. I, cr- uh, I, you know, I grind it. I get lots of you know coffee grinds. Um, and then I put about four cups, three to three and a half to four cups of grounds in um, the vat, basically. Um, that you know for for the the basically the cold brew machine right it's just this thing where you put your grounds in and then you put water in and then it sits there brewing away for 12 hours or if you put it in the fridge 24 hours and so what it does is it basically sits there and it simmers and it brews and sort of ferments more or less and then there's um the mechanism has this sort of uh stand that it sits on and it comes with like a 10 ounce looks like a laboratory uh you know carafe right where you pour liquids into it and i pour about 10 ounces of water into it uh, i typically start with spring water any anything that's a good clean neutral water that doesn't have a lot of um you know minerals or phosphors in it just something that's fairly neutral uh, that's what i use i put about 10 ounces into the top vat and then i put it under the the stand and then um about the 12 hours or the 24 hours later, I flip the lever and it literally goes and pushes it through the filter. And then it comes right out as this coffee extract. So you put in about 10 ounces of water, you get about 10 ounces, you get a lot less back, right? Um, because it goes through this this process. And then um, I put that into a 12 or 16 ounce mason jar and uh, put that in the fridge. And then whenever I'm ready to make some coffee, I, you know, I pull out, I get at least... Um, I get at least near, yeah, I would say I get a little more than 16 ounces of liquid coming back out. Um, or I get at least the 10 ounces coming back out for, for more or less. Mm. It's just funny. You fill the thing up, you, you put it in, and then all of a sudden this, this cold brew. I mean, I will get liquid that will fill a 16-ounce mason jar uh, pretty easily. Mm. Um, definitely will get one that will fill a 12-ounce and then some change. Um so that's it. You just have to be patient for a day or so. Um, you, you, there are definitely uh, methods that where people do the brewing right away. There are some systems out there where people like boil their water and they do their fresh grind. They stick it into the coffee filter and it goes right into their cup. And that's fantastic for them. But the whole process was for me to reduce the problems I was having before. Yeah. So, um, so that that's why I have been experimenting with this. Um, also, if you do like to cook and you want a little caffeine or you like a little bit of coffee flavor into things, let's say mixing into ice cream or a cake or your pancakes, you know, this is good. When you have a little bit of cold brew, you have a liquid form of caffeine and coffee. You can just put like, you know, a couple tablespoons of something in. You'll get that essence right into your food. Yeah. Maybe make some ice cream, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I am working my way there. So, uh, yeah, so there are two things I owe you. I need to, to find through the the grapevine of videos, that one video that I saw that I think does a very good job of showing you uh, how to do it with 
with some kitchen gear. Um, mm. Well, or, I, I got the I got the Hario cold brew. Yeah, which is, I can give you the link for that, but um, it's basically a, a, it's a glass um, carafe, like a, a glass bottle, more like it, and then there's a filter that steeps it in. So you have um, you put in like 80 grams of um, coffee. And apparently you're supposed to let it sit for 8 to 12 hours, not the 18 hours I've been letting it sit. So, oh, no. So yeah. I've been, the rule I've been operating on is 12 if it's outside the fridge and 24 if it's inside the fridge. Oh, no. They, they say 8 to 12 hours in the fridge. Uh, so I've been doing no. it totally wrong on this thing. <laughs> well, I, that's what I read, and that is actually what's worked for me. Well, I don't know if it's... You're doing it through it's... a different system, right? So you have, like, the, the whole... Uh, um... Yeah, but even if I was to stick it, you know, grind up my stuff and put it into a big bowl and then put a lid on the bowl, I, I would still be doing the same timing, right? The only difference is that this this one unit costs 47 U.S. dollars, 48 bucks, and uh, and I found it. It is the um, I'll send you the link, John, directly. But it is the OXO OXO basically uh, Good Grips uh, Cold Brew Coffee Maker. Already found and, it. And um, and so uh, I bought it back in September. Um, you know, it's about fifty bucks now. In terms of a grinder, I'll tell you what I bought. Um, I think you can. I think it almost doesn't really matter. I mean, yes, not all all coffee grinders are equal. I also bought with that uh, some extra filters. Now, I've been making um, cold brew every few weekends, right? I don't go through the coffee the coffee extract that much. Oh, okay, so so what I'm looking at the OXO, and that's yeah. kind of like the toddy. Yeah, so... This yeah, is, yeah I you mean, flip and then it comes out, okay? Yeah, so what you do is you put the stuff in the yeah. top and it has air holes, so it vents out any blooming. Um, and it's way bigger than the amount of grounds you put in. So you won't fill that whole vat yeah. completely up. You'll fill it maybe, I don't know, maybe uh, halfway, maybe a little more than halfway. And then the gases from the fresh grind will bloom and you'll see it puff and it might bubble a little bit. And as the gas is releasing... Um, from the beans. Now, the beans that I get are getting them on Amazon or I'm getting them out of stores. So they've been sitting on the shelf. It's not like they just got popped off the vine and came out of, you know, whatever part of country they came out of. Um, so, you know, the beans themselves might not be the utmost, most, most fresh. I'm not that hardcore. I, I really am not. <laughs> so uh, the beans will sit on, you know, they'll sit in um, a shelf basically in my kitchen for a while until I get around to depleting well, well, the Well, as the soon bag. as you grind them, you have like access to the rest of that thing. So the outside is only the, the only part that's been oxidized. So right. the inside will still be okay for mm-hmm. uh, at least a while, right? Yeah, but also, I mean, with that said, these beans are, I go through them enough in a frequency that, y- you know, in after I buy them, their age is no longer than like six months at most, right? Mm. It's not like they've been sitting there for five years and I'm going through, you know, and a, a big barrel of beans like it's you know that's 10 years old like it's none of that there's nothing really stale about my process but it's not so active that um you know the i'm always everything is fresh all the way down to the you know the making of the cold brew so yeah you can see what it does is it comes with a uh, a beaker basically yeah um and uh you fill it up and i chose to, to use spring water uh, cause I just wanted to eliminate any, not, I mean the thought of like impurities, but I wanted to make sure it was clean all the way through. And yeah, um, well, over there in the U S you have like lots of chlorine and stuff that gets added to the water. So, you know, right. I get that. I mean, that could affect it. Yeah. Um, so this thing comes in like, um, multiple pieces, right? You got the, the big old vat on top. So um, for the people listening along, Polymatic link slash seven nine for the uh, Oxo cold brew coffee maker hmm. to get some pictures. Um, <laughs> I would recommend you buy. Uh, I mean, they suggest getting a couple extra, you know, cold brew. Actually, you don't need it if you're just experimenting, um, right? I think you're beyond the point of wanting to make this work. So my recommendation is if they suggest a couple of the Oxo cold filters, there's it's a few dollars more. I would just 
you know, I would spend a few dollars. I got like 50 of them or something. I, like I said, it took the 10 that came with the cold uh, brew kit. It took me all, you know, half a year before I got, got rid of those filters, right? Yeah. Um, you want to use a filter per brew. <laughs> They'll get cheap and try to reuse it. It gets saturated, oh, wow. you know, you, you pull the filter out. Um, yeah, so, I mean, you toss the, not the, not the, the actual mesh filter, but the actual, yeah. like, you know, little piece of paper that you pull out, that, you know. So, clean up. Okay, so, yeah, they're all messy, right? Getting rid of the grounds is kind of icky, right? So, what I do is, um, once I'm all said done, I let it sit for 20 minutes and it drains. Um, it might have the most finite, barely... You could barely see it stream of liquid coming out through the filter into the beaker. Um, so I just let it sit, you know, kind of un let it let it go and forget yeah. and walk away for a half hour um, until I can visually see and move my head around from all the angles to make sure that I absolutely see no liquid streaming anymore before I shut the valve off. Um and then the cleanup on it is basically um, uh, over the trash can, I take a knife and I scrape around the side or I did sludge and I just into the trash can. <laughs> That's it. And then um, when all said and done, I go ahead and I wash the thing out. Right. And then, then I pull the filter out and then I wash that out mm -hmm. and um, then you dry it off and that's it. I mean, it's not, it's not that complex of a process. Um, it will maintain some kind of scent along with it, you know, because you just had coffee fermenting in there for hours on end. Well, I hope it's not fermenting. Um, well, I mean, that's what the blooming is. So it's not fermenting in like alcoholic. It's fermenting as in the gases are releasing and, Whoa. you know, there's a chemical reaction happening. Not fermenting as it's in processing sugars, <laughs> if that's what you're talking about. Um, yeah. So, I mean... You know, I, I think for 50 bucks, that's probably on the high end of, of putting some initial cash in before you get into a grinder. Yeah. Um, that shouldn't cost you more than 30 bucks, I wouldn't think. I think I probably bought a $30 one. I think you can get ones that are much smaller than that. Hmm. Um, I typically grind up uh, whatever the, the mechanism that you feed all the beans in. I just sort of top it off and I keep grinding it until I have coffee grounds. Um, mason jars is where I store stuff. Uh, um, the, you know, the, any coffee grounds that I have left over, which I can use and mix in for the next time I do it. And, um, any of the cold brew. And you say, uh, you store it, um, airtight so you don't get, you know. Yeah. Um. Don't lose the uh, taste and stuff. I also found when I'm diluting these things and doing the mixing, uh, I can kind of seal up the mason jar and I can give it a vigorous shake and yeah. I can pour it out right into my glass or cup or whatever or uh, be low rent about it and just drink out of it. <laughs> like you're doing uh, right now. <laughs> yeah, we're doing it right now. Which, I mean, they are, you know, you can hear, I think I spent $10 and I bought these wide mouth 12-ounce um, jars which are just perfect. Yeah. Um, uh, but I bought 16-ounce jars bell jars mason jars to store the uh cold brew mm. so so i got a hario cold brew you can find it at paulmatic.link slash 7a the cool thing about this is that um you can just twist off the bottom of the filter mm -hmm. turn it around over your garbage tap it with your finger and it will just just drop all the way out without much cleanup afterwards so that's that's oh. actually pretty good the cool thing yeah. about this that I just read is that you, you only have to put it in there for like eight hours and then it'll be done. Got um, that's, I think that's the problem I've been having. I'm just letting it in there for like 10 hours extra. I don't know where it came up with the 12 and 24 number. Hmm. Um, I've heard it been repeated out of curiosity. I, I read it somewhere and hmm. um, I and think I, that's... It, it might also have been that someone said eight hours and I tried it. I tried it a first couple times. One, don't use instant coffee. Don't do that. <laughs> I did uh, a couple different bags of stuff and that didn't work. Um, 
And then I was like, all right, let me control everything. And I bought a grinder and, you know, and then I, I dived into a little more. And from there, I, I've really had to had good experiences. Mm. Um, and I think I narrowed in that 12 hours was the number. Actually, I narrowed in that 24 hours was the number for me. Yeah. Um, well, you have a different, different whole different type of system for that, of course, because this is where you leave the water, like leave one liter of water in 80 grams of coffee. Right, you leave mm. just leave that in, and it just steeps in it for like mm-hmm. twelve hours maximum. Yeah. and I've been doing eighteen hours, and I think that's where the bitterness is coming from. So I have I have sure. a new batch setting sitting there, and if in eight hours it's fine, then I'm just going to do eight hours. But I also like it because I can use tea in this, and yeah. um, make iced tea. Yeah, so I thought about doing the same thing. I wanted to make some tea as well. Um, and my only concerns is I know the chemistry and I got to find a good, good tea for this. Yeah. It's, it's another thing where I have to experiment a little bit. Um, well, you don't want to use the same thing for your coffee, for your tea as that you did for your coffee. Right. So I might buy a second one, one of these just for the tea. Right. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, these, this thing that I, I leave it sit in the center island of my, because I, well, I just want to be able to pull it and, you know, and I clean it out and I put it back and it's stood up like you see in the pictures there um, on the Amazon link. Um, you can collapse the thing and put it in a drawer. I mean, well, a drawer with height, of course, right? Yeah. You need, you know, need like a foot <laughs> of height at least. Um, you know, it's all collapsed on itself in and then you can kind of put it into a, a cabinet. Um but I just kind of leave it stood up because I, I, I use it often enough um, to make, you know, make the cold brew in the house. So, mm. Oh, well, eventually I think I'm going to come back on this and see, hey, say, hey, hey, this was a success or this wasn't a success. I might try something yeah. else or may just give up completely about cold brew. <laughs> I, I wouldn't. <laughs> I'll uh, try. I, I took try. some stuff in. I had some excess and uh, I had some mason jars and someone was – at work was commenting about like how bad the office coffee was. And I said, I'll bring in some cold brew for you. And I brought some cold brew in and she was like, oh, this is smooth. I love it. And um, I've had positive feedback uh, where I made some cold brew for, for people. Um, I think the key thing is you got to have patience about it. That's all. Well, I got a you lot know. to learn. So I think I'll, hours. I'll, I'll get there. I'll just I mean, that message time. isn't just for you directly. It's for anybody else listening who's <laughs> interested in this. Um, what I haven't made with it is is like any frozen iced cold coffees or you know that kind of stuff. Well, you, um, ice slushy, uh, coffee slushy. Yeah, you could. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the advantage of it is that mm. uh, again, patience. You got to put it in the freezer, let it freeze. Um, but uh, you know, you can mix it in with ice cream. I mean, the advantage is you're getting much cleaner, pure um, extract, right? And mm. you're making it yourself, so you're controlling what you're putting in um if you just want to experiment with cold brew itself without making it um you can definitely know on amazon there are definitely places that will sell you just the extract they've been uh they have different blends um but they're fairly expensive um it would cost you inside of let's say a couple brews it would cost you less to buy a machine at 50 dollars, buy some beans um and uh, make some cold brew <laughs> yeah. than it would be to go buy a couple of these like gallon, you know, coffee cold brew extracts that are twenty, thirty dollars for like maybe a couple of liters. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I have one other thing I want to talk about. Um, I've been uh, building a knockoff 3D printer. I yeah. bought off eBay for 189 euros. <laughs> I thought it was very cheap. Uh, I think it was the cheapest 3D printer I could get on there, but I think there might, although there might be cheaper ones, but um, this one is the only one that actually seemed semi-good. I got it in the mail. Actually, the packaging makes it look really good, so there's that. I've uh, I've since built the the Y axis um, part of the 3D printer. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm still in the process of building it. Uh, I, I didn't have that much time this week, so I only started building on it for like the first two hours of an evening and then I gave up because I had to do other stuff. 
but I uh, I really like um, really like how far is how it's going so far. There is a YouTube ch- uh, thing that comes with it. Uh, you have to follow it along, but they put the entire link in the in the um, documentation that came with it, which is oh. like a piece of paper. Um, and it says and you uh, and I would would shorten it. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not going to put the link in there because it's not you know it's only for the for right. the 3D printer if you have it. But the the, the piece of paper comes with it says Suprot. So S U P P R O T. Yep, <laughs> it's that kind of printer. Um, right. Yeah. It's 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 okay. It it works. I think. Um, I've read some good reviews of this, so I'm gonna try and build it. And maybe when it's finished, I'm gonna put a, a little review on the website, and uh, but we'll get back to you on that. Just um, just a little experiment. See if see if I can actually get get a okay 3D printer for 189 euros. Under 200. Do you want to continue on with the massive amount of links we have for the next? Uh, uh, well, you have a book corner, and uh-huh. I, we wanted to talk a little bit also about music as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, <laughs> that we can get into the fun stuff. Yeah, so let's talk about books. What do you got? Audible recommended this book to me. Um, mm-hmm. It's called Solitude. It's part of a series called the Dimension, Dimension Space series, book one. Uh, uh, the first book um, is about a man and a woman. And they're the last two humans on Earth, or should I say, one in space, one on Earth. And the one needs to get the other. Uh, due to some event, all the humans disappear, and all the animals, but the trees are, st- are still there. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, yeah, the, they they have to you know live with the solitude they have. And then realize where the other one is and get them. So it was a it was a short book. It's about eight eight and a half hours listening through Audible. It is uh, at some points it's a little bit slow. At other points is it's very fast. And there's like disaster after disaster after disaster at some point, and which is a complaint I've read a few times about this book, and I completely agree with it. But it is um, well, it's a nice ride. It's a nice write. It's a, it's a nice different book than what I usually read. Um, also, um, there's some mice in there, and I, all I have to say is poor mice. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just only the, two, the two humans, two mice. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> survive. Oh man, poor mice. Well, she, the the woman's stranded on the space station, so. Um, oh. <laughs> and the okay. mice are there too. <laughs> okay. Not enough food. <laughs> Um, it's not uh, well. Yeah, I, I wonder if they're gonna make this into into a, a movie or like a TV series. That could be really good. I think that might work because there's a low amount of people that are there. Um, yeah, you can do you can do a movie with this for very cheap because you have just you know inside the space station you have to build a set for that, and the rest you can do just do in the real world. The um the the TV show that's here in the U.S. and they, these things don't correlate at all, right? It just inspired a thought in my head, which made me think of the one hundred. Um, oh, but the okay. one hundred is that standard sort of formulaic show please, here. Please don't make that series. Don't make the series about this book with that formula. Please no, do not. No, 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 no it, Yeah, right. And it's but you know what I'm talking about. Have you yeah, seen the one hundred? I've seen it. Yeah, and so I mean that's very much. That thing that that show has some good things in it that have been diluted with uh, cute looking people that are that are twenty year olds acting like teenagers, um, and then they keep pivoting and twisting it to be dark. But but it 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 it's a thing that has like very drama of the week show, yeah. Specific stuff in it that is really good and interesting, and then completely diluted with. Uh, American TV show format stuff yeah. and uh, to get to the good stuff you have to wade through a lot of um, a lot of stuff yeah um, which is why yeah. I gave up on that show <laughs> yeah but I'm still watch again they pivoted it again they have to do that every season they have to pivot um, and it, it's funny because they they've acknowledged it because their their opening for that season changes based on on the pivot so uh, if it's dark or if it's brighter, you know, it's based on that. So, yeah, but these two are not related. 
<laughs> they're yeah. nothing alike. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. it inspired a thought of something about sort of abandonment and um, and you know the planet uh, in a sort of um, apocalyptic state verse and in space and the separation of that so separation and abandonment and uh solitude so i mean that's what it was reminding me of aside from that's its name <laughs> so what else you got more um so the book you can find at polymatic the link slash six i it's on Am- uh, amazon's uh audible there's no um no referral link in there so it's uh still not you know alan's not going to read it Apparently, <laughs> because it does have an affiliate link, yeah, <laughs> or because it's it's not the one hundred. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, th- I think I think that this is not not near the one hundred at all. Uh, uh, not probably. I wonder. I never really researched. I wonder if the one hundred had some origin, like in an actual book series. I think it does. Okay, and is the book? The, I would assume the book series is probably better than the TV show. Mm. Um, but you know, what do I know? I don't know. <laughs> So, have a any researcher on it. Okay, so I think we have some music stuff to go through. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, okay, so I, you know, every once in a while, I I end up finding stuff. Sometimes there's a suggestion from you, like Curly. You gave me Curly uh, a number of years ago. Curly, maybe K E R. Uh, L-I, and mm. uh, every once in a while, I'll remember to go get a new album that she did, and I really like her stuff. But anyhow, uh, she isn't on our, our music club, <laughs> our music corner of, of the week here. Um, I just, I found five people that I've been listening to a lot, um, and at least my initial thinking is I'll probably give more indie less like mainstream marketing uh like brands like Katy perry came out with a new album it's good right but i don't need to tell you that right so i think in this area i'll probably give you or share things that i find that are not necessarily um the most famous people right so like i'm not gonna tell you go listen to the new drake album right uh in most cases you probably already are so, so in this case, the first artist that I found recently, um, and these first four, mm, these first three are more, they're pop music, right? Yeah. Um, I do have an interest. I do like pop music. Um, this is the kind of stuff that I'll listen to during the day that isn't uh, setting a mood for me, that isn't productive, um, right? So for me, uh, Dagny, I found her recently, polymatic.link slash uh, 6Q, this will take you to a YouTube video. There isn't a lot to find. Um, the little that I know about her, she's been doing this for a, a little bit. Um, this isn't completely new to her. Um, and, um, you know, this song is about as, as pop as you're going to get, but I like the energy on it. It's, it's more positive than negative. Um, mm-hmm. This is the kind of thing you you might find. They do a remix and you find in, you know, clubs. Yeah. Um, next one, you gave me this recommendation. I really enjoy her. Orla Gartland um, with a T. Uh, polymatic.link slash 6P. This is one of her older videos, but there's a couple songs that I do like. There's not a lot to find. Same thing with Dagny. There's not a lot to find uh, on her. Um, but on Orla, she does have sort of a YouTube presence. She's been doing it for at least a number of years, so there's a lot to consume regarding that. Um, and again, polymatic dot, uh, polymatic dot link slash 6P. Um, I think I pointed you guys to Clueless. Clueless, Human, these are pretty good songs. These are the ones that stay resident in my head a lot. Um, but all that I've found for her that she's made into an album, I've been uh, pretty good. Really do enjoy listening to uh, what she's putting out. Um, you know, the only disappointment is that she doesn't have more stuff. Yeah. Um, moving on, Sigrid, I found, I think, last... Last, whenever we were going to possibly do last show. Mm. Uh, and uh, I, again, for me, not a lot to find yet, but I do like the energy of this. Um, and polymatic.ling slash 60 as an orange. Yeah. Um, again, um, pretty good energy, very pop music. Um, I don't know what else she'll produce. I didn't find a tremendous amount that I could buy online. Um, I'm sure there might be more like on iTunes, um, but she's 
an import. She is not from the U.S. Same thing with Orla Garland. And I think Dagny doesn't have any origin in the U.S. So these are all sort of imports where they're singing English. Um, and um, and so... Isn't it like Dagny from, uh, from Norway or something? I, I'm, I'm getting that sense, yes. Orla is Irish. Um, and then Sigrid, uh, I already forgot. I want to say Swedish, but I might be wrong. Um, I was curious. I wanted to, you know, find out a little more about her. Um, like, where did this artist come from? What's her origin? That kind of thing. Um, but again, polymatic.link slash six. Oh, and then moving on to two uh, favorites that uh, I've been listening to for a while now. Um, I don't know if I've ever shared this video out before, but I'm, I'm sharing it again for a couple of reasons. Anna Clendenning. Um, so polymatic.link slash six N. Uh, so she is a person that uh, I knew on Vine. She would use little, you know, six second uh, musical bits uh, where she was singing and you could really see the potential of her. And then she started to make some albums. Um, and then she put out an album recently. And this is a video she put out at least a good year or more ago of, of this song that I think it shows you two things about her. One, the level of thinking in her writing, and also um, her ability to sing. And this is a live studio version, and then she did actually make uh, an album release version, but I'm so used to this version, I, I don't know, I prefer this, this uh, live studio version over that one. Um, but to that point, um, there's some thought that's happening She's not as poppy as the rest of the, the first three that I mentioned earlier, um, but still pretty good. Favorite artist, and there's, uh, there's a bunch of stuff to, to buy online for her. And again, also independent. And then last, Mike Did Falzone. Did you get the link for that? Uh, yes, polymatic.link slash 6N for Anna Clendenning. Um, and then last for me, Mike Falzone. I've uh, been listening to this guy. He's not really doing music as much as he used to, but polymatic.link slash six R. Um, he's been doing a little more stand up comedy and you find him uh, doing sort of, um, you know, he worked for SourceFed before it, it fell apart uh, or shut down. Um, but this is a guy who is sort of, I'm sure I've shared his music in the past, uh, but he's sort of a favorite. And um, uh he had a free album that was put out there called Almost Half Serious, and I think that explains sort of his music, mm. right? It's you're listening to a song, and then when you actually listen to what he's actually singing about, he's it's not that he's the joke's on you, it's that he's sharing the, the humorous thought. So, um, But he also does serious stuff, too. Um, but he hasn't really put any album stuff out recently. I think it's one of those... Um, there's examples where he he was sort of always had a band and always was being sort of a musician for so long in his life that um, he just wants to move on and do other things. Yeah. But he still sings and he still does stuff. Um, yeah, so that's it. So those are all the shares that I had. Um, I don't know if Music Corner is good for everybody or not. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I don't know. I, I you know. This is what consumes my brain power, uh, you know, in my week. Uh, it's the uh, earworms that get stuck in yeah. your head that I can't get rid of. Like right now, I'm listening to Orla Garland in my in my head. Actually, or- Orla Garland. This uh, I think I think it was uh, Hank Green that was re- retweeted something. Really? And I was like, yeah, well, I'll go look at that. And then I was like, hey, this is something that Alan might like, so I'm just pass it on. Yeah, you like, pass yep, it on. Go on. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, totally. I, I, I do like it. The, the thing is, she's got more going on her YouTube. She's, you know, she's, I, I definitely like artists who can pick up a guitar and then improv, you know, make an yeah. instrument out of a mason jar or, um, you know, a pencil. Um, and, you know, she'll do YouTube videos where she just improvs a song and she has her guitar, she has a keyboard, and she might have a little sequencer, and she'll put a song together, and then she'll film it, and then she'll release it on YouTube. Um, I wish some of that stuff gets more recorded, um, but, you know, I know how these things work when you're independent. These things cost money. Um, Mm. But I will say, in looking at her YouTube channel, I see that she is following, she's friends with other 
YouTube musicians like Dodie Clark. So there is some videos that you can go back through time and you can see that she's touring with all these people and go, oh, yeah, I recognize there's Dodie there. Oh, there's Tessa. Oh, yeah, I listen to Tessa, you know, that kind of thing. So there's some of these other YouTube independent musicians that she's friends with. Uh, and you'll see her show up in the background with when they do a gig. So I think it's kind of cool. Do you, it was definitely a good suggestion of, for um, me. Have you heard of Jay Fuse? You, you might like his stuff. He makes um, he does a lot of music where he uses different samples from different things, mm-hmm. where he just goes out to, to record stuff. Yeah. And goes to a grocery store, buys some fruits, and makes some music with that. Right. Yeah. Um, you, you might w- want to check him out. Uh, Paul Madigan a... link slash 7C. For, for J Views? For J Views, yeah. Yeah, I um, there's a guy I think is in my in our epic long list of of links, uh, Andrew Hong, uh, that I found a while ago uh, that does similar things where he's like, I'm gonna make a song in an hour, and then he'll just put yeah. that video up, and it's eight minutes, right, five minutes, and you see him pull random stuff together or him make the you know the things he uses as instruments. And put it through Ableton and, you know, turn it into a process and make music out of it. Yeah. Um, so he's pretty good. I don't think that's what I'm sharing for this week regarding him, though. Anyway, um, I have some other stuff. Um, I thought we, we talked about this before the show started. Um, I have some links for Churches, which is mm-hmm. a, a Scottish thing. Yeah. Uh, Paul Maddox link slash 7, 7 and 7, 8. There's two songs that are pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um so you already knew about this. So I was like, yeah. I did. I shoot. knew about churches <laughs> because um, Bryce on OG, um, he, he's like, oh, man, dude, you might like these guys. You know, well, not guys. These, these you know, you might like this group. I was like, I'm really obsessed with them right now. And that comment is like uh, probably a few years ago yeah. um, that I'm recalling from Bryce. And I did listen to churches. I do like them. I just haven't bought any albums from mm. them yet. Well, I saw I saw your list this, uh, this morning. I was like, "Hey, yeah, yeah, he might like this." So I was like, "Yep." Yeah, I was like, "I do." <laughs> <laughs> I've heard them. I'm not. Uh, I I think they didn't hit my sweet spot at the time when I listened to a little bit of them. Um, like you know, Bryce, it hit his sweet spot, and he was really into them for for a while. Um, I think enough that he actually saw them, you know, in concert. Yeah. So. I have one other link for music. Um, this is Ott. Um, I like his music a lot because it's, I'm into the whole Sibiant, that kind of stuff, music, uh, Spongel, that kind of weird, weird, weird stuff. Uh, Polymatic link slash seven, six. Um, it's a, more of like an experience if you listen to the entire album, like it once mm-hmm. is like a, uh, it's like almost like a story, but more mm. in, audio form without actually somebody speaking so oh okay is there any this is no lyrics there's just music uh there are some lyrics there's some uh some samples from alan watts Mm -hmm. in there there are some you know sounds from nature weird stuff in there and there's lots of uh probably most people that listen to this are on drugs but so is this more like background ambient i wouldn't call it that Hmm. but you know, I haven't li- hadn't listened to this on this this he- these headphones. I have some yeah. good headphones now, um, and I grabbed my iPhone and used it with this headset, and it sounded really good. I was like, "Yeah, I haven't listened to this in years. I might as well just listen to it again." <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah." Uh, so, it's, oh, it's good um, so the, the the question I guess becomes is like, where does where does music fit into your daily life? I don't mean like when you're you know, when you're free to do whatever you want uh, without constraints on your weekend, but like your 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 daily, like at work or where, where does music fit in? Music for me is a way to time myself, more like keep um, it's like a processor timing thing, like where I keep my brain uh, on a specific rhythm. Mm-hmm. Um, don't know how to explain this. My brain no, works in weird ways it, it, sometimes. Um, it, 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 it's, it's regulating your pace. Um, right? Yeah, there are certain albums that I use for certain things. So mm-hmm. when I have like, um, I really need to finish something, I put it on a certain album and then I can just go and go and go and go. It's like 
Underworld is really good for me for that because it just keeps me keeps a certain part of my brain occupied with something. Like the the um, I can let the more uh, creative part of me go and let let it do its thing, while the more analytic part is ba uh, basically doing things like hmm, that's an interesting sound, right? There's yeah. something me me is uh, the 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 artistic me is in control of my my hands for the keyboard so I can do the the good code. That's usually I have a couple of albums for that for, yeah. for doing that. If I get, need to get something done and put on Underworld, that's great for that. I um I, I kind of find a number of things. I recognize how music influences us in terms of a uh, production. We're, let's say we're talking about um, like movies, right? How subtle it is. Yeah. Um, and I also recognize that on the right combination of things, um, if I'm in the right mood, music can assist me or enhance what's already there. But sometimes if the nature of my mood is grumpy and I'm at work and I just need to be out of a grumpy mood and I'm grumpy for external reasons um, or they might be related, who knows? Um, I, I mean, I know at the time. Uh, I will use music to sort of counter my mood yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then break me out of it. Um, but also, uh, sometimes you need to hide in plain sight, right? You need to hide in such an environment where you're not hearing everyone else's drama about what's going on around you because it's not your business. That's their department. That's their thing. That's their problem. That's their issue. It's not my issue. It's not my problem. And I also don't want to hear their conversation. Yeah, drowning out people is a very good, yeah, good way. Yeah. So sometimes I will listen to music that I can listen to and that becomes resonant in my background, but, but I'm not thinking about it. I'm just enjoying it. And then there are things like where I listen to music that is more about environmental kind of sound, like... Um, Sigur Rios or something like that. Sigur Rós, yeah. Yeah, which is sort of more of it's there and it's neat um, and it's all very much the same kind of a sound, but it, it doesn't, you know, doesn't insert additional ideas in my head at the same time. So You might, you might like Ott. You might like Ott. Okay, yeah, I'll, 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 tr I'll check them out. But it, it's important when you listen to this album, you listen to it like front to back because it's like a story in that thing you don't want to pick out one number and just right. play skip through it and then just, just let it Got go it. can you do you have to like listen to the album as a whole or can you like listen from track one to track five and then from track five to track ten um i usually just turn it on let it go mm -hmm. and then if i need to walk away from my station or walk away from my uh, my desk i just pause it and just continue later but yeah i got you Okay. I usually have like a point in the story where you are. It's not really a story, but the it's like the feeling of a story. I don't know. It's hard to explain. You, you might like it. Um, yeah. Um, do you think we should move on to the fun stuff? I have like a giant list of stuff to, to share. Let's give a quick thing about it and then share the link and move on. Let's not get into a dissertation. Um, I mean, that would be the only way I can imagine us getting through it pretty, pretty reasonably. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the first thing, air density, uh, seeing air density and seeing the hidden stuff. This yeah, is a Fertassium, uh, Fertassium link. Yep. Paul Maddox link night. slash 63. Yeah. It's very cool. The way it's, he did it's it. It's pretty interesting. Nice. Yeah. 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 It's really interesting. It, if you like science, this is a video to watch. So someone, I don't know exactly how, but they did. They put a camera, probably a GoPro, uh, on some luggage, and uh, they they basically took a flight. And this is a video of what it looks like from the perspective of your luggage when you check it in at the airport. I thought uh, it was a, well, it was a, a 3D, uh, a 3D, a 360 camera, because they do change the angle a lot. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it's definitely who knows. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's an interesting video, and it's polymatic.link slash 6K. You always get the, the K links. Why is that? Oh, I have no idea. No <laughs> idea. Seriously? Yeah, you Is do. that a pattern for me? <laughs> it's a pattern, yeah. <laughs> um, everything you need to... every Everything needs updating by Glove and Boots. I love yes. these guys. Uh, yeah. Bottomatic.link yeah, slash 64. This yeah, is the, a frustration I, I have. Things. <laughs> yeah, I, I've had those days where I'm just like, oh, why do you update? 
<laughs> this was, I laughed at this because I know this problem well. <laughs> that was polymedic.link slash 6.4, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so um, this guy, um, Binging with Babish, is somebody I found. Uh, and uh, this is, I don't know if this is the link that had, had told me I need to subscribe to the guy, but polymedic.link slash 6 L. I think his whole point is, hey, um, I'm going to make a thing that I see in a film or a TV show, and then he'll make a better version if it sucks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, um, you know, I don't know. I, I, I like the format. Uh, these things aren't very long. So it was polymatic.link slash 6L. Starting with Moon Waffles, uh, he did one with uh, Salty Balls from South Park. Um <laughs> He's done all kinds of ones. The problem is I will find myself watching these three to five minute videos, you know, at the end of the night. And I could be up for another 40 minutes. <laughs> Making waffles. <laughs> okay. I, I don't know about the moon waffle, but but him making waffles made me hungry. <laughs> hmm. um, next video is why Uber is a scam. Where yeah. They, they go down the rabbit hole calculating how much somebody actually earns off Uber. So Paul Maddox links like 65. I have no idea if this is actually true, but it might be. So go check yeah. it out. Uh, I, I've taken Uber enough uh, at this point where that the first few times, uh, you know, I I would some people want to talk to you. Some people, they don't want to chat with you at all. They don't, they're just not, you know, very personable. Um, but I've, I've heard the stories from people. Uh, when I've taken an Uber, I said, oh, no, this has been great. I made $600 this last couple nights, right? Um, and then, you know, in the same respect, um, that's not a consideration of all the costs. So yeah. um, when you when you do the numbers at the end of the day, you, maybe this is correct. I don't know. That was polymatic.link, what, 6.5? Six 6.5, five? Six five, yes. Yeah. Okay, so uh, this guy is yeah. like a tech reviewer. Uh, he is one of the people that gave favorable review to the laptop I will hope maybe eventually still buy. Um, I'm working on when I'm going to pull the trigger. Uh, I just, I just want to see cash stay around for a while before I, I spend thousands of it. Um, but anyhow, so he created, he didn't create on his own. He got a kit. He made a Lego drone polymatic.link slash 6T. Um, he does other good like tech review stuff. Uh, I like the guy, but anyway, this is one of those sort, sort of... Um, <laughs> yeah, it was a bit of a mess. <laughs> you watched it? Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah. I watched all of this stuff. I was, I was not expecting anything from it, and um, yeah. Well, it's probably good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, I've got a link. Um, do you know who Neil Blomkamp is? Uh, it, I... I I want to say no, even though the name sounds familiar. Have you familiar. seen District 9? Yes, that's why it sounds familiar to me. Seen, so I know of him. Um, um, Elysium. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I mean, so, I know of the name, yeah. So he has a new studio uh, mm -hmm. where he's making short movies. So this is a short movie uh, called Raka. Um, the okay, studio is cool. called Oats. And there's people like Sigourney Weaver in there and stuff. So oh. it's actually pretty good. Um, right. Paul Maddox, link slash 66. Okay, I will I will definitely have to check that out. Um, one I have is there is an astronaut. Um, he sort of the astronaut is I want to say Chris Hatfield. Yeah. Um, so he is known for doing things like making music videos on the space station when he was up on the you know ISS um, the ISS space station, um, and so. He has a YouTube channel, um, and his son uh, started to do a series on his channel called Rare Earth. And one of the starts was this story talking about 47 Ronin. And um, I don't want to ruin it for you. I think it's a well-worthy uh, thing to watch if you're interested in Japanese culture or culture in general. Um, and sort of the exploring of these kinds of stories. Um, and so this is the beginning of the Rare Earth, and they've done a number of them since then. Uh, polymatic.link slash 6W. Okay. Yeah, I actually watched this. was actually pretty good. Yeah, um, they did it in one take. Okay. One take. That's pretty I good. I didn't notice that. 
Yeah. Um, I mean, he's moving through the whole thing. There's no edits aside from the initial beginning. So. Okay. Um. So MBKHD did a video on why the new Mac iMac Pro is a trap. I, I kind of <laughs> agree with him. Um, yeah. Paul Maddox link slash six seven. So if you have the money, just don't buy one of those. Just yeah. get get the the Mac Pro if it eventually comes out because that will be a machine that we can actually upgrade. Yeah. Okay. I, I have frustrations about this, but um, <laughs> just yeah, go I, watch I, it. I, I um, you know. I've seen some other tech reviewers say, yeah, okay, so it doesn't price well. Like, you know, okay, guys, uh, if you really, really want price per value, you, you can put this same kind of level of power on a Windows system together for, uh, you know, a fifth of that cost, starting cost, right? Um, and, and, oh, by the way, you can hack and tosh, right? You, you can put Mac OS on um you know pc boxes if you really want to try that uh so yeah yeah i've heard these things though i will say the new imac pro those are impressive specs if you have ten thousand (laughs) dollars yeah yeah um as they live in one one device that will age in two years so um okay moving on to me so the name of the title of this short film is not jerks uh i just did want to advertise that as the direct link but it's a good uh, short film polymatic.link slash six x x as in like xerox um, you could have also called it uh, richards uh yes i could have called it richards <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was a short film, uh, and I, I was uh, I thought this was kind of it was pretty good. I wanted to share it, so that was it. Polymatic link slash six x. Okay, next video is uh, well, trash cat eats Nana. Just polymatic link slash six eight. Go watch. It. Okay, yeah, I have a, oh, I have a stupid have a stupid short video somewhere down the line. I assume that's what this is. This is one of them. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll I'll check it out. Um, okay, so I saw this video, and then I've seen a couple other videos. Um, it's called Social Apartment. Um, this is an apartment building in Japan, and you can live there for cases. This is for cases where people want to live in Tokyo um, and have an affordable apartment um, and aren't living there for, like, you know, this isn't your permanent residence. You can live there as as short as like three months to maybe at most two years. But social apartment is sort of, it's interesting. What they do is they take all the common areas like your kitchen, um, uh, the laundry room, um, your family room, the rec room, and they centralize this in nice fancy common spaces. And then you have a very tiny actual apartment. And um, it's affordable considering the cost of living in, um, you know, a major city in Japan. Um, and it's called Social Apartment. And I thought it was interesting. And polymatic that link slash 6Z. So if I was visiting Japan for three months, I would I would probably try one of these places out. Hmm. Did you look at the video? Yeah, I, I skimmed through it because it was a little bit too long before the podcast started. But uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I think it's interesting. interesting. Yeah. Um, uh, if you do a little more searching, I found another another video where it was talking with one of the people um, that started this whole thing up. And, you know, apparently there's a cafe and you get some additional amenities that come along with like you get like um, like 50 bucks uh, at, at the cafe so that you can go around the corner. Uh, the laundry room is included in your amenities, all kinds of stuff like that. So mm. it's pretty interesting. Um, it would be more interesting if um, there were apartment systems like that in Japan that were more common um, mm. like that. Um, I'm not sure I'm not sure how I feel about that here in the U.S. I don't know if I could live permanently in an environment like that. Um, I think I do like having some room and having some privacy, even in my common spaces. Hmm. So, and I have another short, very short video. Uh, Palmatic link slash sixty nine. I totally wasted that link, um, <laughs> but you can uh, go check that out. It's actually pretty funny. Cat not okay. like banana. Okay, so here's my uh, uh, not wasting a specific link, but uh, brush Griffin. Um, it's just. It make you laugh or you're going to be like WTF. 
Hmm. Uh, polymatic dot link slash six s. What was your What was your thought, John? What for for well, this? I haven't actually seen. I oh, yeah, I, I did yet, see that, but, but I I skipped over <laughs> because it was like very short. So I was like, okay, fine. Yeah. Um, I have another one which is water cremation. So they um hmm. for it might be a little dark theme here, but um, okay. if somebody dies. Instead of burning them and releasing all the all the bad stuff into the into the air, yeah. they um, they liquefy people, so and they just leave their bones. Um, so Paul Max link slash six a. It's a really analytical view of this. It's not you know gross or anything. Okay, but go check it out. <laughs> <laughs> so so you're saying you shouldn't uh, have your most favorite sandwich and start chewing this while you're watching the video? Yeah, no. I don't no. remember if they did actually did show anything gross, but they did show bones. So okay, there's that. Yeah. All right. Um, so saving the human race. So this is a channel that puts out some funny stuff sometimes, but this looks like it might be the first episode to a web series. Um, I don't know. Uh, I thought it was yeah. good. It's short. Um, it's not super short, but it 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 looks like. They're going to make this into a series. Polymatic.link slash 72. It, it's good chance it's not going to be safe for work. Just assume that with oh, this yes. channel. Um, you know, their predilection is not to be safe for work. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's no... Have you... Did yeah, you watch this yet? I did see a part of this. and was like, yep, 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 yep. yep. <laughs> um, I did see another video, though. Um, seven ways to maximize misery by CGP Gray. Go mm-hmm. watch this. This is exactly how you're not supposed to do it. Paul yeah, Matica, it, link slash six B. Yeah. Um, there's a song. There's a line from a song. Um, that's that is something like you make yourself a victim every single day, and that resonated with me which has redirected me on not making me the first central point of my problems yeah. um or recognizing that mechanism of people that i know that make themselves a victim right it's first world problems or it's just you is a problem right the world isn't like that it's you and so um i say that with also i've seen that video that you just shared so <laughs> So, uh, I don't know. I, yeah, got you. Understand. That was polymatic.link slash 6B, right? Yep. Yeah, okay. So, um, along the lines of things that um, are interesting, uh, I knew I wasn't going to be able to say the, the actual name of this building or what they call it, but I'm just calling it a living tree building. This is a case where uh, they built a infrastructure for for a uh, trees and trees and things to grow around intentionally and uh, i thought it was kind of an interesting video it is a little long and it's polymatic dialing slash seven one cool i did see that and then was actually intri- intrigued by this so yeah that's, yeah. that's a nice idea yeah. i think making the tree your house is probably even cooler but hey you need pretty big <laughs> trees for that <laughs> yes um, you do there is a, a youtuber slash maker um, from China called Nomi Wu. She goes by the name of Sexy Cyborg. Um, she did a um, modded RC car destruction thing, um, polymatic link slash 60, where she builds a... She did another video where she built it, but um, she went out to a skate park. Right, yeah. And they, yeah. Uh, they dumped some RC cars in there with flamethrowers and stuff, and they go at each other. <laughs> it's actually pretty good. So Paul Magnet right. link slash 6C. I'll, do, I'll do, take a look at that. Okay, so um, I found this guy. Um, polymatic.link slash 70. Um, yeah, okay. So let me just say this. Um, I identify with some of this guy's opinions sometimes. He's a little bit of a jerk. But in the same respect, um, you know, it, it's interesting. If you want to see how to kind of code Snake, that game that used to be on uh, phones. You ever play that game? You said, we're old enough where it's been on cell phones. Where was that like freebie giveaway game uh, where, you know, you just this ever moving, ever growing snake yeah. going through uh, obstacles. And uh, the guy basically, you know, rudimentary snake game in under five minutes shows you how to program that polymatic.link slash seven zero. 
Okay. He has one, he has one uh, video that I, I think resonates pretty well, which is true, where he says something like, um, no one really cares how hard you worked on something. Um, so that, that can show you how much of a jerk this guy can be. But again, you know, I, I understand. I resonate with that. We work hard on stuff we want to share with the world. And, and you know what? Most nobody, people don't really nobody care. Nobody cares. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, speaking of nobody cares, um, I've been working on a Evil Genius Craft um, series. Um, I've recorded the first one. Actually, I've recorded the first seven episodes. And I have yet to edit the next six. So I've re- released the first one, Evil Genius Craft, The Beginning. Paulmatic that link slash six e. Just want to promote that a little bit myself. You know. Yeah, it's cool. I I watch it uh, <laughs> with the other Alan. <laughs> Ooh, um, yeah, the, the only problem is we lost the footage for well, did, we I lost the footage for the second episode for myself because something happened oh. with my recorder. Oh, um, that's not good. And um, his footage of the first episode wasn't that good because um, he had some audio issues and then he had some video issues, which caused the everything to be out of sync so all the audio was out of sync like half a second to a second and then it changed halfway through so it was very hard to edit that it was like eventually after three hours of editing it was like nope you gave up <laughs> but uh, Paul Maddox link slash 6e for some yeah. evil genius minecraft here's a short one that i found that i i found pretty funny what i love the most is the comment the person makes at the very 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 end of this uh and it's i just call it google home and amazon um polymatic.link slash 6v did you watch this john yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm, I'm, I'm wondering when comment. they start talking to each other and decide to yeah. start, start skying it or something but then she she says something at the very end before she stops recording so i love that part <laughs> <laughs> Um, you've probably already seen this, but The Daily Show did a very good video, uh, based on a true typo, Cuff Fefe, Palmatic yeah. link slash 60. This is like the best way you can respond to this. Just a, you know, they made a joke out of it, which is really, really well produced. Go watch it. Palmatic link slash 60. It doesn't matter which side of the debate you're on. It's yeah. just good. Well done. Uh- yeah, I've definitely seen videos where, where people were talking about this. I think I heard a, a recently maybe a reply all where this was a center of focus. But no, I've not seen this video yet, so I'll, I'll go check that out. Um, okay, so I'm a fan of Stargate. Um, I'm not a rabid fan of Stargate, meaning uh, I won't go to a, a, a Stargate you know, or a sci-fi con just to see Stargate. Like I like the show. Um, and, uh, so David Hewlett has a channel. He does all kinds of random things. Um, and, uh, he made a Stargate watch face for his Android watch. Um, I don't know if it's an Android watch or maybe it's got that Samsung one that's not running Mm -hmm. Android, but to the point, he made a Stargate watch face. I thought it was kind of interesting. This is more for maybe John would get a, you know, would get a chuckle out of this. Yeah. I've been following him for a while. Yeah, six uh, Y. Um, he made a, he made like one original video on it, but this is a more recent one. Again, polymatic link slash six Y. Why would you do this? <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, I've been following that guy on YouTube for a while. He also does some Minecraft stuff with his kid. Yeah, he does. Yeah, interesting stuff. And he, and he stuff. is um, he's another series. I think he has like a podcast with uh, somebody who's been who's disabled. Oh, really? Um, yeah, I think so. He's, 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 he actually does a lot of stuff. You get, yeah, you go he, check him out. He is definitely a, a nerd at heart. Yep, and, definitely. Um, and, you know, and I'm I'm happy to always see him on TV. Have you seen uh, Doc's Breakfast? I did. I've watched the movie, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Have you seen the Treat Murray? Uh, I don't think so, no. I think I think a Treat Murray is a very good movie. Go, you should well, go watch it. Well, what do you think about a Dog's Breakfast? Eh. Yeah, see, that's how I felt about it. Yeah, so. okay, but the Treat Murray is actually pretty good. He, yeah. He's also in, um, I think he was also in uh, Cube, uh, the, what was it, The Cube? No? Oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, it's I'm a not horror aware. movie with, like, uh, with the people, six people get trapped into uh, a maze. Oh, like, I'm um, likely not to watch Cube? that. I yeah, I'm likely Cube, not like to. Does not sound like something I'd be interested in. Yeah, he does show up, um, though. I'm not of current mind of where the series is with his character. 
uh, but he was on the show Dark Matter. Yeah, I noticed that. Uh, here and there. But the, I, think I think they killed him off. I just can't remember if that's the case or not. I think also um, Will Wheaton is on that as well. Oh, uh, he is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, next one, Overwatch dance emotes. I've been playing some Overwatch recently, and yeah. I kind of like it. Uh, but this is a video I saw an original one where they actually had like um, the original song behind it, and that was actually pretty well done. This is a sort of a knockoff. Uh, Paul Maddox at Link slash Six G. I think they put some different music behind it that was not, you know, as much to get triggered by the copyright uh, filters. Um, so Paul Maddox Link slash Six G. It's um, the Overwatch dance emote set of music. Oh, yeah. okay, cool. Um, this one uh, is a Verge video, uh, polymatic.link slash 6u, and this is the Google Jamboard. Um, you know, where does this product exist? Um, probably an expense for companies that want to, you know, probably startups that have some money would buy this thing. Um, it's neat. Uh, I, I work in an environment right now that is fairly not collaborative. Yeah. Collaboration is called send me an email, pick up a phone. Um, and, um, so, you know, so, I mean, that's not a complaint. That's just what it is. So I don't think they would ever embrace this kind of product, um, because they don't operate in such a manner that is, you know, again, you know, using Slack or, you know, those kinds yeah. of mechanisms, um, at least not, not my group or my department, but you know, Google Jamboard, polymedic.ling slash six U. Um, I think it's promising. Uh, this kind of stuff has been around for a little bit, um, but maybe Google can execute it in such a fashion where it becomes more commonplace. I don't know. Yeah. It seems a bit sluggish and slow. So I was like, yeah, maybe it's, yeah, maybe it's just I mean, a what, tablet that they use the controller right. or something. Yeah. Well, I mean. Or Android yeah, TV right. or something. Right. Whatever is in there. Yeah. yeah. Correct. Okay. Um, as some of you may know, I'm a big fan of Elon Musk. There's a, a funny video about the story of Elon Musk, polymatic at link slash 6H. Uh, it's about Elon Musk falling down a stair. So I'm falling down <laughs> some stairs. Uh, okay. Go check it out. It's actually pretty funny. All right. <laughs> I, will, I will check it out. I've not link seen it. 6H. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, I've, heard, I've heard a podcast that talks about um, I want to say it was, it might not be Norway, but you know, so this, this different, um, polymatic.link slash seven, four, this is a country that embraces the use of Tesla's. Um, in fact, this might be, this is the Norway. very thing I, hmm? this is Norway. This is Norway, but I thought there was, um, another country where you get, uh, some tax breaks also, uh, like they do in Norway where they're, they're trying to be as green as possible. Um, but you know, I, thought, I thought this was a pretty good video. Um, I think this is a Vox video. It's possible. Polymatic.link slash 74. If you're interested in Tesla, I wish this was something that was more realistic here in the U.S. Um, you know, going more green and um, embracing it more appropriately. Um, but, you know, the bigger your political system, the chances of stuff like this ever happening are, is like never. So... Well, yeah. doesn't doesn't mean I want to go live there. <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, is, the amount of Teslas that have been showing up here is is has been growing a lot. Yeah, I, I think, mean, I, think I, I I got we have one on the parking lot at work, mm -hmm. like every every day now. So they're they're showing up more and more. I saw a video recently where um, somebody was they were doing uh, a tour. It's literally like. A Tesla channel, right? They love all things Tesla, and they all have Teslas, and they're a Tesla car club, and they're all meeting each other. And so they were going to Facebook, and they were in the parking lot, and they were walking by, and there was like, oh yeah, there's a Tesla, and then um, less than like three feet, oh there's another Tesla in the parking lot. The the whole parking <laughs> lot was full of Teslas, um, and we're we're not talking like you know we're talking Model Xs and Model Ss and. You know, you're talking the seventy thousand to hundred thousand dollar plus on common in that parking lot. We're all Teslas. <laughs> uh, Facebook makes you think maybe you should go work for Facebook if you if you want to afford a Tesla. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, so, did you get to see Wonder Woman yet? I did not. No. I 
I like I told you, I you know, maybe maybe I'll see it in the theater. I think it's probably worthy of seeing in the theater. Will yeah, I definitely will is. I get an opportunity before it goes away? Um, probably not, but it, you know, I'll likely probably see it this year. I might just rent it, you know, see it online. Uh, the question is, will I see it in the theater? Uh, yeah. Did you see Ma- uh, Superman versus Batman versus Superman? I did not. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, there's a bit I, in there where she shows up. Right, I heard it about like that. The best yeah. part of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I I heard I didn't hear good things from that movie and it no no like, definitely not it was it was a train wreck but yeah uh, and, the best part of that movie was Wonder Woman and in this movie there's like the entire movie that yeah so it's pretty good uh, but this um, uh, this video I'm talking about is Palmatic Link slash Six J it's about the um, the theme for Wonder Woman oh okay um, about the that sound well you haven't seen the movie but. Um, during Batman vs Superman, there's a theme that when she shows up, it's called mm-hmm. uh, "Is She With You," um, and they did um, a new version for that for the new movie, and they talk about why it evokes intense power apparently. Uh, so go check that out. Paul Magnus links slash six J. Okay, we'll check that out. So I mentioned Andrew uh, Hong uh, Hyung, I guess. Uh, see the notes <laughs> i'm sure i've i've uh, said it wrong but you know so this guy's interesting um he does lots of little things by example he'll say all right i'm gonna make you know he makes his own music um and he does have a lot of albums i've not bought any of them uh i right now i'm very just kind of with regards to him interested in what he does when he does a um youtube video um, but one of those sort of random things that he did is he did something called a MIDI flip um, and where you basically take the MIDI music. Uh, MIDI is basically um, what a lot of so what a lot of artists do is when they're sequencing it, they store it in a MIDI file. Uh, MIDI is sort of the universal f- file format and then it can drive instruments or like drum machines and or uh, turning on, you know, lighting or gear or anything. It's basically a sequencing, um, you know, uh, sequencing, not language, but way you store stuff. So anyhow, he took uh, Vanessa Carlton's, um, was it a, a, a Thousand Miles, right, that song that was out a number of years ago that was everywhere. And he did a MIDI flip, and it really takes a sort of um, frolicking kind of music and really in after he inverted it just changed it completely um but it's still not bad it's just interesting it's it's different so anyhow this is more of a recommendation to follow the guy but it's polymatic.link slash 75 check out his channel um if this interests you then he does more interesting things than this um it's more about doing something random and coming out with a product at the end of it yeah be sure to share this with somebody else i know and they might like okay. that. Yeah. I have one other thing um, regarding to the thing I shared earlier, the ought thing. Ought. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a quote in there from Alan Watts. Um, it's about how life is an, an uh, we thought about life as an analogy with a journey mm-hmm. where there is a, a beginning and then an end where you get a prize. Um, yeah. And it's more a musical thing. We, we, okay. we fool ourselves. Uh, Palmatic link slash 7D. Go check okay. it out. Okay. I will. I will definitely check that out. Um, one last thing before we, we close out. Um, Friday, OG hit 12 years. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> Congratulations. For a long time. Yeah, 12 years. I, I, it's not even I'm looking for, but thank you. But it's not, not even I was looking for that. It was just, um, yeah, I don't know. I just wanted to say that with somebody else. Um, yeah, 12 years. It's crazy. And um, the, the, you, the... The question is, do you regret it? <laughs> huh? Do, do you I regret, regret it? it? I don't, actually. Um, we wouldn't have a friendship without it. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't have friendship with other people. Um, I will say, though, it has become a very good anchor for me. Um, whether I'm like, you know, you get into a thing where you're like, I don't want to do that. I want to sit here and be lazy and eat a hot dog and watch TV until I can fall asleep. Like, you know, we all get into that thing where we feel boundless and we, we don't have anything that is forcing our hand to stay on a course. Mm -hmm. Um, 
there are times where, yes, I absolutely regretted it because the people that were part of the cast were really just sort of disrespectful, period, um, to fellow cast members, to the idea of participating, um, to the people listening, just disrespectful for the whole thing. And they made it unfun for me. And then when I got to the editing, made it really unfun for me, right? They just were kind of, you know, uh, crapping all over the whole thing. And uh, I, the one who's investing the most time in it, was having the most, the hardest time with it. Yeah. But moving on beyond beyond that point, finding people that were on board and open to it um, has been fantastic. It has certainly strengthened my relationship with Matt Pison, um, who is just this great guy. Yeah. Uh, and it's good to have him in my life. Todd, it was, I, you know, I w- he was a coworker, and then we didn't work with each other anymore. Um, I moved on and um, I got to see him on a fairly regular basis and it just kept our friendship more open and alive than it had been before. Well, it's um, still sad that Todd is no longer on the podcast. Yeah. It I was actually just, a cool thing with the tech uh, tech stuff. Yeah. It was just more of a, a life thing for him. It was, he was spreading himself too thin yeah. and he, this was a thing that he was contributing a component that was value, but wasn't necessarily a hundred percent it was a component that i think was valuable for the show and valuable for him but it was also a component that like he personally was not reaping any direct personal rewards because his purpose on the show wasn't directly relevant to the show and so for him it was it was a thing he wanted to give up because he didn't really couldn't quantify his reason to to physically be attached to the show aside from having an outlet yeah. for something like this. Um, so anyhow, I, I didn't want to extend onto a conversation. Just 12 <laughs> years. I just thought that was yeah. interesting. Well, it's changed a lot, one, right? Well, so hmm? it changed, it changed a lot. So from oh, the first sure. episodes, I think I was, I started listening, I think during the 4chan episode, which kind of yeah. gives away where I come from. <laughs> uh, I, but, um, yeah, that was one of the first ones, wasn't it? The, the um, moot was mad at me specifically because, and I didn't, I I didn't understand. My, I didn't indicate it, and I, I I removed some of it. But what Aaron was doing was he was doing um, what they call um, B tard bingo. So four chan slash B is sort of the common, the worst of the best, and the worst of four chan is right there, um, yeah. and that's where most people commune uh if you commune on on fortran so anyhow that's the random board and so to that point what aaron was doing in the background is he was just inserting little like memes yeah, right yeah, yeah yeah from and he was being and sort of a jerk and i limited a bunch of it where it was being disruptive to the conversation and he thought and moot was mad at me because he thought i was playing a joke on him after the fact when he listened to the show uh he didn't hear that in the interview and he was mad at me and uh, we never really spoke. Uh, he just sent me uh, an email one day, randomly months after. And he's like, "Hey, hey, dude, how you doing? Good. How you how you doing?" And that was the end of our conversation over <laughs> email. Uh, he's just like, you know, I thought we conducted a fairly good interview at, at yeah. the time. Um, and um, yeah, so you know, I mean, I, I wasn't looking for more than than the introspection of having a conversation about what he was doing at Fortune yeah. at the time. Um, well, it was and, a different beast then, right? Yeah. It was a completely and different thing than it is so, now. Yeah, so, you know, he was mad at me, and uh, or he was mad at the show. And, uh, I mean, we didn't get any major hate for it, thankfully, g- given the strength of 4chan <laughs> um, and, and yeah. all of its external influences. Um, I mean, thankfully, they didn't, you know, didn't topple over because, you know, he didn't, I don't know he expressed any anger about it. Um to the rest of the world, but apparently he had some kind of private issue with me and I didn't know about it until, um, he made some comment to somebody else. (laughs) So when did it start? When the podcast start? Uh, June 15th, 2005, which, um, ironically is, is the first time in my career at this point I've been working, I think about 10 years and I, I worked at a company for about five years and I got laid off. And my last day was June 15th, 2005 at that company. 
Um, mm-hmm. Even though they had like said, you're laid off, go home, um, and, and your last payday is that day, right? You, you receive no more money from us, you know, on this day. Um, and you're officially released on this day. And I didn't, I didn't coordinate that. I just said, okay, we're not going to launch this time. All right, well, then we'll launch next week. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, let's, we'll just launch the 15th. Okay, that's good. And that became the day, and that became the last day. So it became the, the end of something that was stressful but fundamental for me and the beginning of something that became fundamentally something different. Yeah. Uh, so and the then, end and, then and the beginning of something. a year later, new. we started doing the shortener thing. Uh, yeah, thanks to you. Uh, well, we, well, we were using Shrinkster, right? Um, uh, the thing was, from uh, from um, uh, Mondays, the guy that the Mondays yeah, yeah. guys do. Well, so yeah. they didn't they didn't make Shrinkster. They had a fan who who already built Shrinkster and let them know. Um, and, and then it the crashed. URL, the URL shrinking stuff. Oh yeah, then it eventually crashed because something happened. Uh, um, you were using it, and then I was like, okay, I'll let's build something. Well, I mean, I knew about Tiny URL, yeah. but Tiny URL had already been like slash uh, eight characters long kind of sequencing at that point because uh, by the time we did that show, Tiny Earl had already been, I don't know, nearly seven years old at that point. And um, I mean, now, like with Bitly, everyone's got custom URLs now, so hmm. uh, you can do that stuff. But we and made uh, you, made OG Link. Yeah, OG Link and Shortener yeah. and... Um, and Polymatic Link, <laughs> <laughs> which doesn't have any any logo stuff on it. It's not branded, but nope. it is basically the shortener engine, uh, so that you created. That's so old. I need to redo yeah. it at some point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All these it works. Side it works. <laughs> yeah, but it works. Yeah. So cool. Okay. Um. So let's uh, close this down. Alan, where can they find you? Uh, Twitter is a good place to, to find me. Uh, last name is Chase, C-H-A-E-S-S. That is my Twitter address. Uh, you can find me in other places, uh, but I think that's a good place if you want to get a hold of me. Uh, yeah. And you can find me on Twitter at WebDevi, W-E-B-D-E-V-V-I-E. You can also find us at polymatic.social. That's where our, our social links will be. Uh, for feedback, you can reach us at podcast at polymatic.media. Our Twitter is the polymatic. Our website is polymatic.media. Surprise. Uh, and I hope you tune in next time. The music in this episode was by Sei Uns. It was licensed under Creative Commons Attribution and found on the Free Music Archive. You can find these tracks at shorter.com slash prk. 